Hi, welcome back to First Year Undergraduate Microeconomics. In our last presentation, we introduced the concept of a sales tax, or what's known as a goods and services tax, or GST in Australia, or a value-added tax, or a VAT in Europe. We noted that a tax on a good or service puts a wedge between the price buyers pay and the price sellers receive, or in other words, the price buyers pay is simply equal to the price sellers receive plus the tax to the government. We used the example of the pizza market, and in particular we considered what would happen if there was a $2.50 tax on pizzas, that's our T dollars, which the government says is a tax on every pizza. That meant that the price buyers paid had to be $2.50 greater than the price sellers received. However, because trade is voluntary, the quantity bought had to be equal to the quantity sold, so we got our new equilibrium where there was a gap or a wedge of $2 between the price buyers paid, the price sellers received, but the amount that buyers wanted to buy was the same as the amount sellers wanted to sell. And that's given by our diagram here, where this gap between the buyer price P1B and the seller price P1S is exactly equal to our T dollars. The effect of a sales tax was to reduce the quantity traded, to push up the price that buyers paid, and push down the price that sellers received. In this presentation, we want to do two things. The first thing we want to do is to look at the amount of money the government makes from the tax, the government's tax revenue. The second thing we want to do is to work out who bears the burden of the tax. Now, notice that because price has gone up to buyers and they buy less, buyers are made worse off by the tax. That's logical. If you have to pay more for something, you're going to be worse off. Conversely, sellers receive a lower price, so sellers are also worse off. So the burden of the tax the cost of a tax, if you like, to the consumer and producer is split between the consumer and producer. And we want to analyse how that split arises. Let's start by looking at how much money the government makes from a sales tax. That's pretty easy. Government revenue is simply the size of a tax, which is T dollars, times the number of pizzas that are actually sold in equilibrium with the tax, Q1. Or in other words, it's going to be T dollars, that height there, times quantity Q1, it's going to be this red rectangle that I'm colouring in on the diagram. So that rectangle represents the government's tax revenue. Now remember from last time that the prices and the quantity under tax do not depend on who actually pays the money to the government. Remember that it doesn't matter whether the seller or the buyer physically hands the money to the government, that doesn't change our equilibrium outcome under a sales tax. But while it doesn't matter who physically hands the money over to the government, the government is ending up with revenue from the tax. And that revenue must have come out of someone's pocket. It must have come out of the buyer's pocket or the seller's pocket or both. In other words, we want to look at who bears the burden of the tax. So let's go back to our pizza market. Here we've got our equilibrium with the tax in place. And the government's revenue is given by the red rectangle. So we've just got that up here. The government revenue is the size of a tax times the amount or the quantity traded after the tax is in place. Let's divide up that rectangle into the amount paid by the buyers and the amount paid by the sellers. Let's start off with the buyers. The buyers face a higher price after the tax is put in place and they buy Q1 units. So we can think of the amount of that rectangle that's paid by the buyers as being the yellow shaded area. That's simply going to be the higher price that the buyers pay times the quantity that the buyers consume after the tax is in place. Similarly, we can think of the amount that the sellers pay. We can draw that in by the blue rectangle, which represents 
the reduction in price that sellers receive times the quantity of pizzas sellers sell after the tax. So we can divide up the government's revenue rectangle from the tax into two other rectangles or two other areas. We have the yellow area, which is the price or the amount of the government revenue, the government tax revenue that buyers pay. So that's the amount or the burden of the tax on the buyers. And we have the blue rectangle, which represents the amount that the sellers pay. As drawn here, the buyers are paying more of the tax than the sellers, so we say that the buyers have a larger tax burden than the sellers. But it's easy to change our diagram and get a very uneven split of the tax burden. So, in this diagram, we have the government's tax revenue given by the height of a tax times the after-tax quantity. And you'll notice that in this diagram, the demand curve has been drawn so it's very inelastic. A large change in price only leads to a very small change in quantity as we move along the demand curve. The supply curve is actually the same as we had in our previous diagram. So we've got our new equilibrium. The price to buyers is T dollars above the price to the sellers. Given their price, buyers wish to buy Q1. Sellers wish to sell Q1, so this is our tax equilibrium. But let's now look at the burdens of the tax. Buyers pay a much higher price when demand is inelastic relative to supply, so their burden is now given by a much bigger yellow rectangle than before. Conversely, sellers only face a small drop in the price that they receive, so their burden, or their share of a red rectangle, is given by a much smaller blue rectangle. So, by making demand more inelastic, we've shifted the tax burden onto the buyers. What about this case? Well, now we've got our original demand curve for pizza, but I've made the supply curve of pizza very elastic. In other words, a small change in price leads to a big change in quantity as we move along the supply curve. So our supply curve is now much more elastic than the demand curve. What's our government tax revenue look like? Well, we've got our new equilibrium here. The gap between the buyer price and the seller price is given by T dollars, the tax. Given the price P1B, buyers want to buy Q1 units <coughs> and sellers want to sell Q1 units given their price. So that's an equilibrium. The government's tax revenue is given by the red rectangle, simply the height of the tax, T dollars, times the amount sold after the tax. That hasn't changed. What about our burden? Well, notice here that because supply is very elastic, buyers face a much higher price increase than before. So the burden, again, is very much on the buyers in this example. And that's given by the yellow rectangle. The height of the increase in the price to the buyers times the quantity. And again, in this situation where supply is elastic, the amount of the tax paid by the sellers is rather small, this blue rectangle, so the burden on sellers is fairly small. Notice that if supply is relatively elastic compared to demand, that may be because demand is very inelastic, or as drawn here because supply is very elastic, then most of the burden of the tax will fall on the buyers compared to the sellers. In contrast, Let's turn our attention now to a situation where the supply curve is relatively inelastic. So I've drawn my original demand curve, but now I've made the supply curve steep or inelastic. A change in price leads to very small change in the quantity that sellers would like to sell. Our government tax revenue in the new equilibrium is simply the size of a tax times the quantity Q1 that's sold after the tax is in place. So that red rectangle. But notice now that because supply is very inelastic compared to demand, that the price buyers pay has only gone up by a little bit, whereas the price sellers receive has gone by, down by a lot. So in this situation, 
the amount of the tax that's paid or effectively paid by the buyers, the tax burden to the buyers, is relatively small, that yellow shaded area, whereas the amount of the tax that's effectively paid by the sellers, the seller's tax burden, is much larger. It's given by the blue rectangle, the change in price to sellers times Q1. Finally, in this diagram, I've got our original supply curve, but now I've made the demand curve very elastic. So a small change in price leads to a big change in the quantity that buyers would like to buy. So again, supply is inelastic relative to demand. In our new equilibrium here, the government's tax revenue is given by Q1 times the tax, T dollars. Notice again that because supply is relatively inelastic compared to demand, that the price buyers pay has gone up by a little bit, but the price sellers receive has gone down by a lot. That's reflected in our tax burden, so the tax burden on buyers is relatively small. Effectively, buyers pay only a small amount of the tax revenue to the government, whereas the sellers pay the big blue rectangle. Their price has gone down by a lot over the Q1 units. So the tax burden, the amount of the government tax revenue that's paid by buyers versus the amount that's paid by sellers, depends on relative elasticity. If sellers' supply curve is relatively inelastic compared to the demand curve, sellers will bear most of the burden of the tax. If the demand curve is relatively inelastic compared to the supply curve, buyers will bear most of the burden of the tax. Remember again, that doesn't depend on who actually hands the money over to the government. The burden of the tax depends on how prices change, not on who sends the cheque to the government. How prices change depend on demand and supply elasticity. The other thing you may have noticed in our diagram is that the amount of tax revenue the government receives and the change in quantity from Q0 down to Q1 also depended on elasticity. For example, in the diagram here where demand is relatively elastic, the government's tax revenue is pretty small compared to some of our previous slides. So, in general, if demand or supply is elastic, or indeed if both of them are elastic, the government is going to tend to get less tax revenue from a sales tax. Conversely, if demand and supply are inelastic, the government's going to tend to get more tax revenue. The government will get more tax revenue when the reduction in quantity associated with a tax is small. If demand or supply is elastic, as we've got drawn here, you end up with a big change in quantity and the government doesn't make as much tax revenue. So to summarise, we've asked the question, who bears the burden of the sales tax? And we've shown that that answer depends on the relative elasticity of supply and demand. And the rule of thumb is that the relatively inelastic side of the market tends to bear more of a tax burden. Thanks for listening. Talk to you next time.